right now, guys, I'm going to give you the three reasons why 92.7% of all dropshippers fail. What is up guys, you can kind of see my little brother there, but we are back with another video and today I'm going to be going over the top three reasons why 92.7% of all dropshippers fail. I don't want this kid in the video, you can still see him. I'm back in my Airbnb in Italy, I'm just going to show you guys the views again. Hopefully you guys enjoy my all the value that I'm dropping, leave a like, subscribe. We're growing this YouTube channel up to 100,000 subscribers in no time, so be on this be, join the community, be with me on my journey. But the most important thing about it, but the most important thing about this video is that you will now know the mistakes you need to avoid them when you are starting out your dropshipping store. And many people go into dropshipping without, without being fully prepared. They think, it, they think it's so easy, but what I'm trying to teach is that you gotta actually treat it like an actual business. You're running a real online business. Fashion Nova is running a real online business. Russell Brunson is running a real online business. It's, this is really pissing me off, that good guys there. But you guys just get started, and you don't even learn off the people who already made the mistakes, right? Because never learn from your own mistakes. Learn from others because it's much cheaper that way. You will save a lot of time, and you will save a lot of money. So right now, guys, I'm going to give you the three reasons why 92.7% of all dropshippers fail. And some of these might be a little shocking, some of these might be obvious, but this is the hard fact, this is the hard fact and a truth. So make sure you write this down, make sure you avoid this when you are starting out in dropshipping. Number one, most dropshippers completely avoid and don't give a shit about email marketing, right? In a real online business, look at the statistics, like 50% of all online businesses depend solely on email marketing for the main portion of all of their income, right? A real dropshipping store, a real online store, has at least minimum 20% of all sales from email marketing. If you do not include email marketing right away, you're starting off at a huge disadvantage. And email marketing can be tedious. If you're a good writer, I would do it myself, but that's, you guys have Upwork. Always go to Upwork, find the best email marketers, and start building out your newsletters, right? If, you, if, if any customer hits my store, automatically there's a there's a little notification that pops up and gives them an opportunity to right away enter their email for some percentage off. All right, I'm giving them the incentive to already join my newsletter, then I'm building rapport, then I'm building, I use the SOAP offer sequence, right, where people start learning more about the business, we give them more information about the products, and I guarantee you, as soon as you start thinking about, I wanna genuinely provide these customers some type of value, I wanna give them a good product, you'll see a huge exponential difference in your online store sales results. So. Obviously, abandoned cart recovery emails are super vital, right? Do ne never use the ones that they give you right away. You gotta write them out yourself. Include GIFs. Make it from a person like Karen. I'm about to sneeze. Give me a second. Fuck, I'm about to sneeze hard. But do it from a person like, the person who's sending the email is an actual person. Even though it's automated, set it, say like, oh, Karen here. Oh, Johnny here. So people are feeling like they're building rapport, they feel like they're talking to an actual person, and they're not being targeted, they're not being sold. Instead, you're building a relationship with them. They wanna learn more about your company, they're interested in it, right? So email marketing is extremely important, and it's tedious, so people just choose to avoid it. When you're going into any store, you need to have email marketing because you never know how well a product can do or how well your store can do without email marketing. So that's the number one reason and the first reason why most people fail. Number two, most people fail because they do low ticket dropshipping, right? You could find high ticket products on AliExpress, but those 20 cents, $1 products on AliExpress just simply won't cut it. You know why? Because people are catching on. People are catching on to the products you're selling, the products that are being shoved in front of their faces for the last like two, three years are cheap AliExpress crap. They come in a month. The audience no longer want those crappy low ticket products because they know they're low quality, but instead, you wanna start providing a real type of, if you wanna start running a real business, you gotta start selling those, fuck, fuck this iPhone, <laughs> my bad. So, if you wanna start acting like a real business and start 
making money like a real business, you gotta start offering high ticket products, right? So many people, this is actually funny. So many people are transitioning from low ticket to high ticket because this is simply what works, right? People told us two, three years ago that drop shipping would die, right? And I was scared, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be making a million dollars a year anymore. But I didn't realize that drop shipping would adapt and that this is what it's adapting into, high ticket drop shipping. For selling these $500, $300 products which actually are valuable to the customers because people, people do online shopping but they're not looking for $10 products, right? When they buy those $10 products, they're, they're just buying them, right? Low ticket drop shipping works. They're buying them only because of the scarcity and the urgency and they, they're not looking for those products, right? They're just, they, they're just somehow in the same niche. They're somehow um, interested in that, in that exact industry and they get that product which is shoved in their face at a crazy discount, at a crazy limited stock left and all of a sudden they buy it, right? That works. You can make money that way but you can't comp people for that long. Eventually, people catch on, and how many 75% off free shipping stores have you seen? Do you think the customer has seen on Facebook for dogs, or for babies, or for camping? These poor people who just scroll through their feeds have been targeted with this crappy, these crappy ads, these crappy low-ticket products for the last two, three years. Right, but what happens? I just want to make sure this is recording. What happens if all of a sudden if they're being targeted with products which are expensive? Right, which talk products they might actually need, right? Then it's a whole different story. So most people start off selling the same exact products as everyone else, those free plus shipping products, and they end up failing, right? They end up selling products which everyone else is selling, those low ticket products. So that's the second reason why most people fail, 92.7% to be exact, right? Start selling products that people actually need, and start selling more expensive products, it works. Guys, you need to have patience for it. You need to have patience for a high ticket drop shipping because, again, when you're testing your products, uh, when you when you test the products, you need you have a much higher break even point, right? I could spend five if my product is worth 500 bucks, order fulfillment costs 150. I could technically spend 350 dollars on ads and still be breaking even, right? If I get one sale, then I spend 150 bucks on the product order fulfillment, and then 500 dollars I break even. So you need to have some type of patience, you need to have some type of budget, but this is what works, this is what allowed me to travel the entire world, right? And the last reason why most people fail is that they're not building an actual brand, right? Email marketing, um, high ticket dropshipping, and brand building all coincide, right? This is so easy for me to talk about because this is true. So with personal branding, you don't want to build a gift shop. You, you don't want those 99 cent stores that you walk by in like New York City if anyone's been there, selling those cheap again, like AliExpress Chinese products, is that you want to be an actual business, an actual brand, like an Apple, an Adidas, something like that, because if you have an actual brand behind it, if you actually take the time to go to Upwork.com and get a logo, instead of just making a crappy one, right, or just not even having a logo at all, I guarantee you that will be an exponential difference. And email marketing is a huge way you can start building a brand, right? How else are you going to communicate with your people? And if my stores are being scaled, I start building a blog, Right. I, I even get a podcast, I've done that before, where I get I go on Upwork.com. Upwork.com is going to be your best friend when building an actual brand and building an actual business. I hope this is good. Right. So with Upwork, you actually can get a blog writer and a podcast speaker to start building an audience for your brand, for your store. Right. I've done this before, it works. Any online business, if you guys watched my previous video, the secret to building an actual online business Every single business has some type of free content, right? You want return customers, you want people to love the brand. And through blogs, through podcasts, through email marketing, through logos, through store dis through like um, store descriptions, you could kind of BS it obviously because you're writing it in your room. But I say that the store was built in LA in 2013 and we have a brick and mortar store. I write it out, I be, I be creative, right? That's what I do. So brand building is extremely important. So my camera died, I'm in a different location, I'm still here. But I just want to quickly end off this video on a note that no matter what happens, right, if you're under 21, if you're under 25 and you're going into online business, then you will be successful 100%. If you're 16 years old and you're going into entrepreneurship, you will 100% be successful because it's just a matter of time. And I respect you greatly, right? But these are three reasons why most dropshippers fail. Do not fall for these, do not fall for the trap, right? Do not be lazy, most importantly, guys.
So just make sure you avoid these three these three reasons, right? And you will be successful, especially if you're young. Trust me, I believe in you. If I did it at age 16, 17, you could do it as well, right? And you're really lucky that you realized all these stuff, right? That you wanna be an entrepreneur, that you don't wanna be in the rat race. Because most people, a lot of my clients at age 40, they realize, fuck, what did I do for the last 20 years, right? So if you're into entrepreneurship right now, congratulations and keep trying like it will work no matter what drop shipping is just a matter of patience right if your first product doesn't succeed keep going no emotions attached make sure you have email marketing right very important make sure you build a brand make sure you start selling products which are expensive which are uh, pretty expensive and you will be successful right not like the other 92.7 percent who try and then give up right away so with that note thank you for watching I'll catch you guys later peace make sure you like subscribe and make sure you put on the notifications so every time I post, I'll be posting every fucking other day. Catch you guys there. See you.